Hello, everyone, and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly show where we talk about Paragon remakes and Ethereal. This week, we're going to be talking about um, uh, Predecessor's interview with their new senior game designer. We're going to be talking some Ethereal stuff, Shurikens, to be exact. And uh, we've got some Overprime stuff. We've got a Kayla short on Utah, on Utah, on YouTube. It's kind of like the, um, the Paragon teasers used to be. And uh, we actually don't have anything for fault, but we might talk about it a little bit. And then uh, since we are doing this live, we will, of course, discuss yeah, with the community. We'll, we'll discuss with the community throughout, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm your host, The Man Goose, joining me as always. And actually, both of them are joining me. <laughs> we got uh, Jelly Knees and the Viking Jedi. I'll let them figure out which one wants to talk first. Uh, I mean, the more important is definitely <laughs> going to talk first. So... Uh, what's up, guys? I'm happy to be here. We've got Viking <laughs> live in studio this in time. Studio, yeah. Uh, super happy that Vikings around. <laughs> Viking and Jelly casting spells, absolutely. It's true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, excited to be here. Excited to talk about all this stuff. And let's get this show on the road, Mangoose. Viking doesn't need to talk. I, it's okay. No, not yet. <laughs> no, you, you don't want to, you don't want to say anything. No, no. Honestly, uh, so I'm here uh, visiting, and uh, we're we're doing some uh, scouting around in Utah. So we got to visit uh, my my good buddy, the Jelanese, and uh, Viking just docks to me on the internet. Live, I know. Live on That's what I was live, saying. Uh, live on now, everybody knows where internet. Jelly lives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I think I'm just most stoked that this is uh, going to be a live you know situation I'm, I'm excited to see what you know chat has to say and um our interactions with chat um but uh no it, i think it'll be fun if anything or it'll be a shit show it, it is what it is i'm, I'm, oh, I'm no. happy either way we decided to go all crazy with it like you two are together and yeah. then we're going live and yeah <sighs> okay um yeah if you two could just rub your beards together for me that'd be great what, what beard does he have <laughs> 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 All right, um, so let's get started uh, probably with Predecessor. Predecessor had their interview with their new senior game designer, X Sundown. They'd, they had announced that, that, that he was going to be on the team and um, just give us a little more in-depth knowledge of his experience with, um, he is a former Epic Games employee, so his experience with Paragon and um, I guess he was the marketing something or other for Fortnite or something, I don't know. But uh, I don't know. Jelly, what, do you, what did you think of this interview with X Sundown? Well, as a fellow marketing something or other, um, I think it's no, uh, I think the interview overall gave a lot of like insight into Sundown, what he did do for Paragon back in the day and theoretically what he's going to continue doing for Predecessor. Uh, I know the three of us kind of talked about it a little bit that it felt a little groomed um, in like just the way that they, it, it was worded in such a way that it was supposed to be a conversation or it was supposed to feel like a conversation that Nabori and him had, but it didn't feel like a conversation. Like no normal person's like, oh, well, you know me, Nabori. Like, <laughs> like it just felt weird. <laughs> like, um, but overall, I think it was good information, right? Just a little weird presentation. That's the only thing I got as a marketing something or other, of course. Um, <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck about marketing. I mean, true. Big true. <laughs> Uh, Viking Jedi, what were your thoughts on the interview overall? Uh, again, it's same thing. It was it was fine. It was cool to get like you know a little bit of insight um, about uh, the guy and what his his passions are. I, I was excited to hear some of the things that he uh, mentioned as far as like what he wants to bring to the game and what he thought the game still needs to be worked on. Um, so the, the, those were like little nuggets of information that I thought kind of peeled back the curtains a little bit of why he feels like he was brought in for which. Um, you know, obviously speaks to what the team thinks that they still need for the game. Um, so that's exciting um, that they're, you know, obviously trying to address it. Um, I think I mentioned to you guys that I felt like it maybe was a little bit concerning that he was kind of like a jack of all trades as far as his resume was concerned. Um, and maybe that's okay. That's what they need in a lead. But a lot of times, like, it feels like when you're kind of like a jack of all trades, you're like that old saying, you're not really a master of any. I know there's more to that saying, but just using that saying in, in isolation, it does mean, mean a little worried that he doesn't have like enough oomph to really carry the team in, in a specific direction that it might be a little like, oh, well, I don't know. Like, yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. And it won't really have any definitive. I sometimes feel like you really need someone who can steer the ship um, and make a final decision that's going to be a good one. And, uh, and so that's maybe my only worry. But his interview was fine. It, it sounded like it was yeah, cheesy, yeah. Uh, but it was fine. It, 
it definitely looked like like they had sent him the questions beforehand and then he wrote yeah. his answers, which I think is c- perfectly fine. It was just yeah. like a more of an organic way to introduce him to the community than just having like a, a lengthy bio or something like sure. that. I thought it was pretty well done. He seemed like a really cool guy. He had a lot of ex- um, experience with competitive mm-hmm. in the competitive gaming environment, but he did say that he wants to focus on like baseline being you know everybody will be able to use the character but they will still have skill expression which is very important we've talked about that Um, before my only concerns with the interview overall was that what he was involved with in paragon was iggy and scorch both the first and second iteration (laughs) which if he had done a good job on the first iteration he wouldn't need to you you might want to make that argument however iggy and scorch was made for the legacy map he had to be updated from the monolith map so we can't really Mm -hmm. dock him on that and then the other kit that he had a, a big part of was Murdoch's rework, which nobody fucking liked Murdoch's rework, where it was just all passive. However, I think that he was probably under constrict constraints. He was probably told that they want a more passive kit. Um, I'm excited to see what he's going to do with Predecessor, though. This is a big opportunity for him. He's He's going to be the senior game designer, so he'll be able to do what, he wants to with these kits instead of having epic dictate to them because epic obviously made some very poor decisions later in the paragon lifespan um so this is probably i i would imagine he's very excited to get out there and get his own ideas into the game as opposed to being dictated to as far as what they want from the kits yeah absolutely i think uh wukong is perfectly balanced in paragon's later life so I'm not sure what you're talking about. As the, as they went on, they made worse and worse balance decisions. Um, so get your head on straight, Mangoose. Um, <laughs> no, it'll be interesting. It, it's one of those, he may have worked on those things, but to what extent, right? That And that's right. the unanswerable question. He, the only person who can really answer that is him, is what level of, did he work on those things? Was it like Narbash, where he named Thunk and moved on? Or was it full-fledged, I came up with the abilities, I came up with the whole overall design? One of those things. Oh yeah, that that was part of it, wasn't it? He yeah. he named the ability Thunk, which is a great name it for that is ability. A good name. <laughs> it is a good. It, it, it's, it's very Thunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree. I agree with you guys. I think it, uh, well now it will be his test, right? Like, as this will have mm-hmm. all of his name on it, right? And so right. if there's uh if there's successes, he gets to really put that you know feather in his cap and say like I pushed this forward. Uh, he won't really be able to hide from the name Epic was the reason X Y Z things didn't work right, and so uh, so it's exciting. It, we'll see what what he brings to the table. It, it, the interview felt fine. Good takeaway. Good to just get more information from the team as a whole. Um, I'm always preaching for give us more, give us more. We want to stay hyped, and so um, good to hear from the predecessor team. And I think uh, sort of the the thing that we're sort of missing here. It speaks volumes about the future of Ameda Studios that somebody that worked at Epic for Fortnite, an obviously very stable job, is willing to move over to Ameda Studios. Like, they pulled somebody from Epic Games who was working on Fortnite. Yeah. Like, that's a pretty big deal. I think that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, with that, Steve Superville, right? All the people that they're bringing over. They have a lot of talent there to help them succeed. Yeah. Yeah. Putting the money to good use, I would say, at least in in in, in theory, right? Again, a lot of this is to be proved, but it's off to a good start. It's hard to be uh, um, pessimistic about these most recent changes, um, including what we're going to jump into next, I'm assuming, is the Decker numbers, because um, I think the community has, like, a really, to me, really exciting reaction to them. Um, I've been paying attention to, like, youtube and twitter and the comments and everything it just it's really funny like the almost dual personality dichotomy that's coming through with <laughs> with the the changes like some people are overhyped thinking decker is going to be the next greatest thing ever to grace you know 3d mobas other people are like ah oh, it's so broken and lame and nobody can never you know uh unseat her i don't know i i'm sure it'll be somewhere in between but uh, i'm really excited to to see what she looks like eventually but what were your guys' take once we actually got to dive a little bit more into the into the numbers yeah, that's a that's a great transition into the Decker numbers. So they released these Decker numbers after we recorded last time. Um, so we talked about Decker's kit last time for for the minions, but we didn't talk about the particular numbers. So uh, Rocket boots her passive, which lets her kind of double jump. 
Um, that's on a 20 second cooldown, but it can be lowered by casting an ability by three seconds. So you don't have to hit the ability. You just have to cast the ability, which how do you count her cage as a hit ability if you were to count that? In? But it doesn't matter because <laughs> that, that's off the table. But uh, so I, that's I think there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think that's a pretty cool passive. You know, and uh, I know a, a pretty uh, good YouTuber put out uh, a decent uh, video, really deep diving into uh, all the abilities and uh, even adding in some really good commentary about how uh, he perceived them. Um, so I would encourage, you know, that that, that, that they go and t take a look at it. It was Wait. by this guy named uh, Mangoose. You guys heard of him? Oh, I thought you were talking about me. I, oh. I, don't, I don't know. I've never heard of that Mangoose guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mangoose, your video was great. On it was. That, it was honestly. Really fun. Um, God damn what it was. I put some work into that one. <laughs> I made the old footage look old timey. It's doing and well. Shit. Like people are watching it. Like you were, he was, guys, Vegas is one of the hardest working people behind the scenes on his channel. He worries about this stuff. He comes across so nonchalant in the shows. I'm telling you, it's the funniest thing when he's like, it's so cute. Vegas is cute, guys. I'm just telling you, he's adorable <laughs> when it comes to his content, man. You're it's awful. the best. <laughs> Dirty, filthy liar. <laughs> So let's move on now. Um, Photon Disruptor, this is the slow that will replace our, our, our slow bubble, but it is on our queue. This is the line of damage that goes out and slows people. Yeah. I think the main concern here is 50% magical damage scaling. That seems a little high. I agree. And typically in these games, magical scaling is, there's more number for number, right? You have more magical scaling than you do physical scaling, right? For every, just to throw out numbers out there, for every 10 physical scaling you'll get a hundred magical scaling right and so that number is bigger on those items when she gets to full build if she's going full damage she could have an extra 400 500 damage attached to the end of that skill and that's insane like that's yeah. and even if she is going support right not even counting if she goes mid lane if she just goes <laughs> support and goes damage build mm -hmm. she can do some damage oh yeah I yeah. think that's cool. I, th I think that's kind of cool. Like I've already expressed my opinions about our kit and how it might be a little overpowered. We really need to see it in game. Like we really need to see it in game before we make any true assumptions about it. But goddamn, fifty percent magical damage scaling on this, and it hits for eighty up front mm -hmm. and uh, caps out at two sixty. So I have a quick question on that. I know we're going to go more into the numbers, but like, would you guys agree that since I mean the, the easiest part of her kit to land is probably the box but like the bouncing stun grenade is still pretty difficult there's a skill cap on that or a skill ability like you need to be able to or floor that's what i was looking for skill floor to be able to get there right and same thing with i mean the laser looks pretty easy to hit but we don't know in game and especially in like really intense fights that might not be super easy um there is a delay on her ult and how soon it also will hit and how quickly people can get out of it so I know the numbers do seem, do you guys kind of have a similar read or have you thought about it from that perspective that because there's still skill expression really needed to be able to fully get it across, you know, in a, in a team fight or even in, you know, pick potential, or do you think it's easier to execute and it, it's just going to be over people for power? I think honestly, it's going to be that, yes, you can't pick up Decker and do a bunch of damage, but three, four games in, for the most part, you're going to be able to do some damage. Like you'll get used to the feel of it. And just it'll be that. What about you, yeah. Mangus? Uh well, I just want to respond real quick. Uh Robert Jones, uh, so is, is she actually a mid laner now? Or was that a joke? Uh, she's not a mid laner, it's just people are looking at the scaling in her kit and thinking that she might be a mid laner. As far as like how hard her abilities are to hit, that um the slow beam looks like it's actually gonna be fairly difficult to land. Um I think our cage is probably going to be fairly difficult to land because it does have an activation time. Mm -hmm. And you think about the times you've missed a steel ult or you've missed a Decker ult. Like there's times that you miss that shit. So um, just, you know, it's going to be followed up though by that's going to be a follow up ability anyway. Yeah. I think the exciting part too is that most of the numbers obviously are changeable and scalable, right? We also right. don't know a hundred percent. This is the beta. Yeah. We also don't know, like, his, um, I forget his name, and I'm totally sorry, but he was in chat last week when we were doing this, and he talked about um, that he f still felt that it was absolutely, in playtesting, that the, she's more successful in, as a support. And um, Ruba. Ruba. And um, because the other, the mid laners do a better job at what, what you would be putting her there for. Now, I still think in, like, if we're talking competitive, that, you know, 
you're going to be able to to worry less about the damage maybe that another mid laner might be able to put out but you're gaining so much more control and, and ability to control the map and and all that stuff and that's fine but maybe what from what they're looking at in a quote-unquote solo queue environment it's it's almost not worth taking her mid because you're going to be missing out on a lot more damage because you don't have the coordination to be able to really utilize her kit to the fullest extent unless you're in a competitive situation where you're all in comms and stuff and so that's something to kind of consider that maybe in competitive style where everybody's able to follow up on all of her cc and slows and all that stuff that that it's it could be overpowered in a mid lane role otherwise it's really only going to be super beneficial in a duo where absolutely the person's going to consistently follow up on on the cc so that's something to consider yeah, yeah i completely agree um, well, speaking of our CC, CC, let's talk about a uh, containment fence. Mm -hmm. So this lasts for two and a quarter seconds at level one, three and a quarter seconds at level three. Three and a quarter seconds is a long time to be trapped inside of a fucking cage <laughs> in a late game. It is like when your TTK is like one to two seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I keep thinking about is that in predecessor, as of the last test, at least, right, Mangu, something you and I talked about was the time to kill late game is instantaneous mm. right it goes from forever at the early game to anybody supports included can 100 to zero somebody <laughs> like that and so the late game potential of having a three and a half second field that they're stuck in is kind of crazy and yes everybody has a flash right in predecessor everybody has the ability to blink uh, away from a target with verticality and a lot of people have movement abilities but still all it takes is you baiting those things out or knowing that they're down to get a guaranteed kill. Like that's, I don't, and I don't, I would say that's the part of her kit that I'm most concerned by is the healthy feeling of that cage being three and a half seconds. Yeah. I think uh, somebody in comments uh, pointed out last video um, that they think that it should be similar to, um, oh my gosh, totally Vigar. no, not Vigar's in, uh, in top lane, um, his little bubble thing that, um, the grave digger guy. I'm totally Doric? Right. Yeah, his you know how he has a little trap and you can shoot oh. it. Oh yeah, yeah, multiple hits. There you go. Yes. So having yes. I apologize guys. Normally we sort this stuff out and then you guys get it we edit it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting it all live and raw. Uh we're raw dogging this. Anyway, so uh mm -hmm. yeah, you being able to shoot it or hit it or something like that having a health field maybe to each section. You know what I mean? So people can turn around and shoot at it or whatever and maybe um, and, and be able to get out of it that way is a good idea, I think. Um, I, I think that is probably the best balance. If they want to keep the cage as a basic ability, mm -hmm. if they want to keep the like that functionality of the cage, I think that's probably one of the better balance choices is to make it that after three basic attacks, the one, one panel of the wall comes down. Mm -hmm. And that with that, you can then walk through or like something like that. Where it's so early game, it's very, very strong. And then late game, it's really strong against people that don't have high attack speed. Mm -hmm. But there is some counterplay to the ability without needing to burn a crucial blink or or whatever it may be. But if you do that, then it's blocking. Right now, it doesn't block basic attacks or any or it doesn't block anything. It just blocks the movement of the hero. If you make it so that you can pop it down, then you're kind of buffing it a little bit because now it's blocking basic attacks. I think it's a bigger nerf than it's a buff. Because okay. if they can get out of it, like that's that's at the end of the day, it w always going to be a giant nerf to the ability, right? Being able to get out of it faster than that three and a half seconds. Okay, I agree, Robert. By the way, <laughs> Decker makes me want to play Prime more. It's true. <laughs> I, so I think if anything, like outside of just the Decker stuff, if this is what they're like, you know, how they're approaching their kits and stuff like that, going into early access and into release by the end of the year. I'm really excited. I like the way that they've got their numbers situated on here. Um, it, it just looks really clean. It looks exciting. It looks like something that is, you know, polished and professional and ready to be kind of tweaked and messed with. And uh, if all the kits are going to start looking and, and feeling like Decker's current kit, I, I'm really excited to see what predecessor comes up with. I'll be really happy to see people play a Decker because that means I'm not shoehorned into support and I can fucking go fame mid. <laughs> 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 ah, I love me some the Fae. What's up, the Fae. Fae. So, um, next up is her stasis bomb. This is pretty much the same as it always was. However, I really love this. They reward you with a longer stun mm -hmm. the further away you hit the stasis bomb, which 
Um, this is just a great decision all around as far as I'm concerned. It rewards the player that hits that long range stun. However, if you're stunning from somebody that far away, most of the time they're just they're going to be on their own, so nobody's going to really be able to follow up on that. So it's not as frustrating to play against. Um, I mean, of course, it will be frustrating, like um, like a bar situation. A lot of times, you're landing stuns when the enemy team has lost a team fight and people are trying to run away, and you land that long range <laughs> blast stun. Like your team's definitely going to be able to catch up with them now. Which is pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Um, yeah. But again, fifty percent magical damage scaling on the stasis bomb. This and thing's going to hit like a truck. Most of the time, I would expect this will be the ability people still max first to get mm -hmm. the benefits of that longer stun both at short range and at long range. And with that, it does 220 base plus that 50%. Dude, this thing can hit like a truck late game, and it's going to feel that way every time you get hit by it. I still think that most people will max Q because of the lower cooldowns, but uh, yeah, I agree. But it, it, dude, I think just anytime you're rewarded for, because that's such a hard thing to do, right? Especially when you start adding in verticality and terrain and stuff like that. So if you do hit it, and you stun them, stun them, like, oh, dude, yeah, everybody's going to feel like a god. Now, what you're also going to end up having, though, is the guys who are going to sit back at turret and just try and lob <laughs> over and over and over again, never, and just hope that they get one. Um, it does 700, 700 damage, bro. Yeah, Why yeah. would I step out any farther than I have to? No, right? like, to. Fire for effect. Fire yeah. for effect. I, I'm also <laughs> secretly hoping with this kind of stuff, too, that they come up with, like, quote-unquote achievements or something like that that you get. Like, you know, so if someone lands, like, that max range stun or something, you get, like, a little achievement bonus for yourself <laughs> or something like that in-game. I, I think that's just cool. Like, a reward people for doing cool shit in your game. Um, but, yeah, no. The, her damage does seem really high. So I'm curious how it's all going to really play out as far as how they're looking at scaling everybody else and all their items and uh, and all that stuff, because we don't know exactly what it'll look like as far as once you have items on you, what kind of, you know, damage resistances they might be looking at and how they're wanting right. to, you know, I know you guys got to play test it, but they might've revamped a lot of stuff. And so this is a peak and maybe how they're looking and maybe they're going higher damage because they want games to be a bit more, you know, aggressive and quicker. And they're not looking for games to, to go into that, like, you know, 45 minute range. They're wanting to be in the, you know, 25 to 35 minute range. You know, yeah, I think they'll know more after we get our hands on the game and people actually play Decker. Yeah. And then they can start adjusting those knobs, tuning tuning the numbers a little bit. Um, I do want to really quick address um, a comment that John just made in yep. chat. Um, yes, everything, you have basic attack damage and ability damage. Mm -hmm. So all your basic attacks deal the same type of damage. It's not like Paragon where you had physical ener and energy based. Like Grim.exe was an energy based carry so increasing his energy power would increase the power of his basic attacks it's not like that in predecessor it's just like it is in fault where you just have basic attack damage and uh ability power damage yep and what about uh robert's question how does the scaling pair to other supports currently in game you know what i really don't know man mm -hmm. i wish now that they're giving these these figures out of game i wish they would update their website to have all the current characters in there and even leave the work in progress sticker on there. That's fine. Right. But, oh God. Yeah. But Definitely show do that, but show us what everybody is. So yeah, this doesn't feel like it's in a vacuum because right now it's like, great. She has 50% scaling. What does everybody else have? Does Gideon have 80%? Does what like put this in context for us a little bit better? I would love to see something like that on their website. Please not Gideon at 80% though. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I remember that very first time they, they did a beta. Not not the very first time. The second time they I was going to say <laughs> that first time was uh, a little rough. But uh, <laughs> fucking Narbash, I was like deleting junglers with support Narbash, and wasn't building like damage or anything. But it was still just fucking destroying people. Oh, back oh, when God. combustion um, was busted to hell, dude. Yes, <laughs> yes, I remember that test, dude. Exactly. When everybody damage carries, everybody was building combustion because it had <laughs> yeah. it was instead of like. 10% 10, 10 extra damage. It was like a thousand percent. They had two extra zeros or something ridiculous oh, yeah. on there. Oh, it was fantastic. This didn't make it to the game, but there was a test one time that it was just a couple of us content creators and gadgets bubble. They had it set to where every tick of damage would deal the max damage of the accumulated Ooh. damage of the bubble. <laughs> so like Riddick tried to gank me. I was on gadget. I threw down the bubble. Boom. He's gone. Yeah. <laughs> they fixed that of course before they put uh, it into brilliant. the brilliant <laughs> yeah that shit was kind of hilarious um 
let's let's talk about her ultimate now the ion strike this is where she summons down like in a big area like a strike you've got an outer area and an inner area inner area they get stunned outer area they get slowed and this has 80 percent magical damage scaling starts at 160 Ooh. caps out at 340 so they did say that they want her to be able to follow up on her own abilities and not rely on her team this this might do it yeah uh follow up and deal all of the damage are not the same <laughs> thing um especially so at max level she's doing 340 damage base plus 80 yeah. percent through the entire circle that's the thing that bothers me the most if this was the inner part of the circle that also stunned okay reward the tinier hitbox sure. with more damage sure right but the fact that the entire circle is going to do that insane of damage right if we go back to my example of let's say they get she has hit that let's say 80 percent if she has a thousand magical power or magical damage it's 800 she's doing 1140 damage in a single hit if she hits this at all that's insane right that, that's just absolutely bonkers she will kill a carry single-handedly with an ultimate and either her photon disruptor or her stasis bomb. Just those two things is all she needs. It's a lot of damage. And it looks cool as shit, by the way. 100%. I think it, her whole kit looks way cool. I, I It's it's a sexy looking kit. Uh, it's a lot of damage. I mean, I, I said it in the first video. I was like, dude, this might push her from my perspective into mid lane. You guys were initially kind of hesitant. But I was just looking at what <laughs> she could do, not even the numbers, just the fact that she could do it in the first place put me into a position where I was thinking, dude, she could just be a badass control mage. And on that note, Mangus just walks out. Of on course. Me. Yeah, he just he doesn't even care anymore. Yeah. Uh, if we're, <laughs> just so you guys all know, we are live. We are just hanging out here. Uh, welcome, everybody who's just now joining in. What's up? What's up? Thank you for being here. If you're enjoying this, please let us know that you like this style of content because uh, we've been trying to get Mangus to do this for, for just a little bit. Uh, so if you're like, yeah, no, it, could, it, yeah, feel free to throw us your questions. We might not get them to you right away, but we are looking at chat. And uh, and if it's a good question, we'll make sure to read it out and uh, get you an answer if we can provide that for you. But uh, all right. yeah, thank you guys all for being here. Would you not talk about the predecessor? Uh, yes. I think we all are. Right. <laughs> Let's move on to a thorough. Ethereal. <laughs> So, uh, I'll, Jelly, of course, I'll uh, let you take the lead on the ethereal discussions. You are. Whoa. We froze, so for, we a froze for a second. It's we're fine. back, though. We're back. We're good. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as of today, like today for the live stream, we have one post out on Facebook. And so, if you haven't seen that, go check out Ethereal's Facebook. As of tomorrow, when the video comes out, we'll have two posts out one on Facebook, one on Twitter, I believe it is. Um, and it's going over the new item tree that we have in Ethereal. So one kind of, I guess, uh, area that we felt the item tree needed more improvement was physical damage characters not really having a, a form of cooldown reduction consistently. They had to go basically one or two very specific items to get any kind of cooldown reduction. So this whole tree is for physical damage ability-based characters to get the, the damage and the cooldown reduction that they want to really thrive. And then as we get later in the week, it'll so we'll do posts on all of our social medias. So Facebook and Twitter were first. Then it's going to be Instagram on Wednesday. It's going to be YouTube on Thursday. And then Friday will be a Discord post with all of them together, kind of going into more detail for each one. Um, and it's these items, the the effects that the tier three items have are wild. And I can't wait for you guys to to see them because they're they're so good. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Now, uh, when I saw this, um, I immediately thought of Leah. Okay. And I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but um, the shurikens work pretty good on Leah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <then. laughs> um, but yeah, she's a very, she's a physical based, but very ability focused hero. She's the flying jungler uh, of Ethereal. And um, yeah, a lot of people try to build her straight attack damage. No, she is very much all about those, those those abilities and hitting really hard really fast and then getting the fuck away so well mangoose is throwing because leah's a magical based character so oh, i don't really? know why mangoose is building shurikens <laughs> on this <laughs> I, dude, her I, basic I hit hard and she has cooldown good. reduction sure but she's a magical based character um, <laughs> maybe it's just the cooldown reduction because i was able to fucking 
I mean, you experienced it. <laughs> yeah, I was also 200 health, Mangoose, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've dropped you from, like, full to almost dead. Of course, your life still brought you right back up. So maybe if I wasn't building that, you would have been full to dead instead of full to almost dead. Um, but for characters that are coming out and assassins, this is going to be a really big item tree for them. And that's kind of where it was developed to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what some of those potential tier three effects are going to be. So yeah, it's it's going to be super cool. <laughs> I hate that they just said that. I just saw the <laughs> Wanda and Cosmo. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Thanks, Windu. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, That's goodness. great. Uh, <laughs> Wait, oh, never mind. You're Cosmo. Don't no. worry. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> oh boy. But yeah, so it's it's gonna be a cool item tree, and I'm excited for it. I saw on the Facebook post today there were a couple comments on there about like. Oh, this item's already broken. I was like, stupid, guys. Like, this is... Because the item today was called the Broken Shuriken. People are already complaining oh. that it's already too strong. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. Viking, what did you think? I mean, I'm, I just think it'll be cool for m more itemization options, right? Like, if, even if you're just, like, you're not going, like, full Shuriken the, the whole way. Like, if you just feel like, you know what? I need to be able to have this item in my kit to be able to do this thing that I like to do better. Like you're giving more, you know, exploring to the players. And, you know, I, I just think that that's always valuable, you know, and obviously once things get more fine tuned and it's not as overpowered right now, uh, it'll be cool to see what it looks like. Um, because it, it just, any game that where itemization feels just like you have to build this or you're just basically not playing right. That's, that's a feels bad. So anytime you can kind of build away from it, or if you feel like you need to be able to, you know, itemize into another build versus one build. That's when the game really gets exciting from a, a, a strategic level, and that that excites me. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's cool. <laughs> uh, we do have a few questions in chat. If you guys want to jump on those, I don't know. <laughs> Go for it, uh, Mangus. Which, are one you, you, which one do you want to hit? Does that make you Doug Dimidome? If we're yes, Wanda um, and Cosmo. I don't All remember right. that much about Fairly Odd Parents. Wendy would like to know, does playing MOBAs with friends actually lead to a better experience if they are new and you are experienced? I think so. Uh, I that think Viking like would tell you that it show depends. Kind of question, though. I think Viking would tell you that it depends on who the experienced player you're playing with is. <laughs> What are you trying to say, Jelly? Oh, I'm not saying anything about him. I'm saying things about me. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying shit about me. I thought you were talking shit about me. Oh, well, yeah, that's but that's a whole different thing. At least okay, one of us right. is good at the games, usually. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I, I do agree with what uh, what Jelly's kind of uh, saying. Like, it depends on the patience of the the person who <clears throat> is teaching, right? Like, if you if you tend to be somebody who who struggles when people struggle to learn the game that you're already familiar with then yeah it's probably not going to be a good time and it might be more annoying to play with said friend uh than if you're able to just kind of go with the flow and you know ride the waves of disappointment that is going to be somebody who's learning especially if we're talking in this space especially there's really only one mode that you can play and that is in the competitive mode if you're playing like on you know, in League, you can play, like, Aram with your friends. You can play some other, like, you know, whatever for fun mode there is and, and get them some experience playing different champions or whatever. But because of the 3D MOBA space, it's all skill shots all the time. It's new characters that nobody's ever heard of or seen before that don't necessarily work like any characters they're familiar with. And there's a lot to learn mm -hmm. in general. Even supports, which you would argue is supposed to be the easiest one to learn, is still fairly difficult. Everything's mm -hmm. difficult. The, the, it's, we talk about this all the time. The skill floor is very high for third-person MOBAs. Um, so anybody who's new coming into that is going to immediately be hit by a struggle bus. And if you're the friend trying to teach them and you can't deal with their struggling, uh, maybe not. You should just solo queue at that point, I guess. I, I, I think new players should just be good at the game, and if they're not going to be good at the game off the bat, they should just should not play. You know? just fucking leave. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Just get out. If you get matched up against somebody that's been playing for years, then and you lose, then you're just bad. Yep, hundred yeah. percent. Been yeah. true. <laughs> I'll be bad at the game, and it'll be fine. Yeah, it's true. And that sounds like the perfect segue over to fault. <laughs> um, uh, we got nothing for fault though, so we're going to I mean, segue over to overprime. So, but no, 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 no. I, I, I think it's important. Why do we have nothing for fault? 
right? there's nothing for fault. Uh, that is something to talk about. <laughs> so, that we don't have anything for fault. Is and where the not fuck even... is they being scorched? Oh so, my god! Right as we started, someone asked a question. Christos, uh, it sounds ambitious that they're going to announce Iggy during Gamescom. More likely, they will just announce the return of Richter. Because oh why is god. Richter still disabled? <laughs> <laughs> um, he's too oh, fucking good. No, I've been telling you guys for so long. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's the their Richter versus my Richter, right? My Richter's always bad, but their Richter's always a god. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Man, honestly, I don't know. like that. Why is Richter still disabled with no like update as to what's going on? It's been three weeks now, and if it is true that they're waiting till Gamescom <laughs> to do Iggy and Scorch, <laughs> it's gonna happen. Oh no! Gamescom is at the end of the month. No, I'm, I think it's gonna be the Richter stuff, dude. That means uh, <laughs> you guys spoke okay. it into existence. It's gonna. That's what's gonna happen now. Here's Jesus a joke Christ. that only fault fan, like real <sighs> hardcore fault fans, will get. What the fuck is Pappy doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> like I never really realized that. <laughs> Pappy was now. on the road to two thousand Richter games, and now he's just waiting. <laughs> Uh, Edgar brings happy, up a man. good point. Um, what does Fault need to do so they don't die in three to four months when Pred comes out? Release content? That's a big one. <laughs> the better question is to you, Edgar. Like, what's going to keep you playing Fault versus going to Predecessor or Overprime when they come out, right? That's, yeah. the, that's the real question because the, the devs have... The, they're the devs. They're doing what they're going to do. But what is it that you're looking for as a player? That's the big thing. Is it, So what do you want them to be doing? to keep you interested in their game when those other games come out and it doesn't matter. Because that's that's really the question that Fault's trying to answer. They're doing their own way of answering it, but that's that's really what the players need to be, be, be there. It won't matter what the devs do if the players aren't there. Yep, 100%. Um, it's, I really, really hope they're not waiting for Gamescom to do whatever the next move is. Because that is a month and a half of free to play that they did absolutely nothing afterwards other than hotfix patches. And I and I didn't think about it until I saw that message, but that is entirely possible that that's what they're doing. <laughs> and that terrifies me. Uh, well, I, I'll tell you something that they do well that during one of the predecessor play tests, like weekend play tests, I actually did play fault for a little bit during that play test instead of just playing predecessor the entire time. And the reason was is because I was very close to getting like, I think silver decker or golden decker or something like that, like during her with her mastery progression. So I wanted to finish that out real quick. Mm -hmm. So they have that master mastery progression, which is player retention, mm -hmm. giving them a goal to work towards. Sure. Um, so they, but they kind of eliminated that with the uh, loot boxes because now you don't really have a goal to work towards because you can't work towards having so much matter to unlock this or that. The only goal really is mastery. So they kind of shot. That's an even that's another that's another check in the cons column for their loot box system. Yeah. I it's I'm nervous for them. Uh I really hope they don't wait till Gamescom. I really, really hope they don't wait till Gamescom. Maybe this is the week that we'll get Iggy and Scorch. But so far, every week that we haven't gotten Iggy and Scorch, I've sent both of you a message saying, How do we not have Iggy and Scorch yet? Like what? And granted, I've been saying Iggy and Scorch are coming for like six months now, Mangoose, but it's still, but still, what the heck? Like, where, where is it? Uh, it just seems like, um, and I know we do this all the time with Fault, and I don't want it to come across this way, but it just unfortunately does. It's like, it just feels like they're sleeping at the wheel. Like, they are literally the only one that are launched. But everybody in this space who's paying attention knows the other two are coming. And that's, so it's like, if your current player base is all aware of the competition that is coming your way... And you're just kind of like cruise control, you know, in the slow lane on the freeway. Like you're just, I don't know, man. I see to me, I'm like, why aren't we in the fast lane? Why aren't we really pushing narratives? Why aren't we talking more about what our plans are for a month from now, three months from now, six months? Like we, I, as a player base, I want to know like what's keeping me investing more time into this game currently than just as a holdover or a placeholder for one of these other ones that seem on paper, now, we don't know these games are going to be good, but on paper, they seem exciting and fun because the current version of what we have is not really meeting that need. If the current version was meeting that need, I think way less of the player base would give a shit about Overprime and Predecessor coming out. Mm -hmm. But we give a shit about Overprime and Predecessor coming out because Fault's not that good. 
it just doesn't fit what we're looking for and i know every person in the chat and us we could have various ideas of what we're looking for for me i just want more fun games to play and to have more fun games i don't want each game to feel the same five champions every single fucking game and that's really what it seems like i get every time i go in it's gonna be gideon mid gonna be you know whatever it's just like i don't know it's kind of boring it's fun at first the gameplay itself is fine it's not the game play it's just the lack it, of games. It's the stagnation yeah, of just, releases and it's just it's boring it's inconsistent with when you get new things or when something is exciting or even even balance patches balance patches i i firmly believe league of legends while they do a lot of good balance passes there are definitely balance patches that come out that are just to throw the game in the air and make it exciting <laughs> for everybody to figure stuff out again <laughs> right and I so it's we used to do that a lot and and there's Hopefully you're doing that and it's still mostly balanced, but <clears throat> it's shifting things in such a way that it's exciting for players to play again. And Fault does not have a lot of those patches, whether it's new things or even just current balance, that makes things drastically different to the point that they're uh, exciting consistently. Yeah. I, I love that Fault is free to play right now. I've been telling everybody who would listen that fault's not that bad like they got mixed reviews on steam which is like way more like i was looking for free steam games the other day and like i was just straight up passing by anything that had mixed reviews and it, and then it clicked in my head it's like holy shit like that is re a really big thing um it doesn't deserve the mixed reviews that it has it, they should really should be positive reviews however if we look at the hard truth of it People are using Fault as a placeholder for Predecessor and Overprime and hoping that Predecessor and Overprime will be better. Yeah. And that's uh, that's horrible to say, and it and it hurts me to say it because I really love Strange Matter and the way they do things. Um, I love that they're so self reliant. But I mean, it, it was in the it was in one of my comments where somebody was watching a God. I can't believe I forget his name. He comments a lot, but anyway, he he was talking about he was he got into watching Fault on Twitch, and the first streamer he watched was somebody that was raging at his team and then fucking just alt F forward and laughed about it saying, what are they going to do? Yep. And that's like, you see that attitude a lot from fault streamers and it's, oh, it, it's terrible. I, there's nothing SMS can do about that though. That's just, that's just the community. And that kind of sucks. It kind of sucks that they really can't. Uh, the commenter is James Eastwood. I, I do want to say, I don't hey, think there's, there's, thanks, man. I don't think that there's nothing that SMS can do. Like, I do think that there's stuff that they can do. One, they can have whoever their, their um, well, I would say their community manager. I would want them to be really active in the chats of, of the streamers. And if they see somebody creating a, you know, less than what they want, you know, I, then they would be getting proactive either, at least in the chat, and saying like, hey, this is not something that we want to see our game doing or whatever and you know talking to that guy or giving him a temp ban or whatever it is that needs to be done um and like and, and actually come out and put to me it comes out to like hey we saw this streamer talking like this they alt f4 just like we talked about it in discord we saw this guy do this thing we are happy to announce that guy has been banned for seven days we had a chat with him in the dms letting him know that that is not the behavior that we're looking for or for people to be presenting to uh to the community um, so we hope that he does better when he comes back to our game and we hope to see you guys on our, whatever that that's an easy to do tweet. And it makes people, whoever's following along go like, they give a shit. I would be stoked. I'd be like, Whoa, dude, I would have been messaging you guys. As soon as I saw that tweet come through, like, bro, did you see they banned that streamer? And they they're like, they're being so proactive about it. Dude, it would make a, those few things, but it's all encompassing. They need to release more content. They need to be more engaged with their community. They need to be talking about what their road plans are. It feels like the obvious things are there, and for some reason, they're just choosing not to do them in the pacing that I think they need to do it. And maybe they don't feel like they need to do it. They they have some unknown stratagem that is better than us, and I'm not in a place to run a business or be a game developer, but it just seems like people are waiting for the other two games instead of playing your game. And to me, that's not good. Uh, but maybe Ed what do Ed I know? Edgar Velasco in chat says, even some partners are toxic as fuck. Yeah. So I doubt they do that to a regular player. Um, yeah, some of the partners are a little eh, I'm not gonna name any names. <laughs> I mean, I know one guy who tries to talk shit about people's beards, and that's just weird. <laughs> He's actually 
the positive driving force behind 100 percent fault um, i know windu's in chat but bearded is like the fault fanboy number one he's the me of ethereal for fault like he's just that that's bearded and and that's not even like a slight on bearded like that's just what that's a great thing for them to have and i wish more of the partners emulated that same feeling i it's actually with be- that in mind with bearded because like i know we all like to back and forth with bearded um but he actually does make me want to play the game more mm-hmm. when i see his passion and like how excited he is about stuff and like how much he actually gives a shit the thing that's weird to me is it feels like bearded is doing more and gives more of a shit than the people who are making <laughs> the game and that that to me is a that's a red flag bearded and windu Bearded and Windu both. No, yeah. Windu's in chat. No. No, Windu. No. Okay. No, Windu no. Does, <laughs> no I, I know. Win, I think Windu does a great job also. But Bearded is just way more active when I see him in like the Discord and stuff like that. And I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just missing Windu when he's in there. I'm not saying that Windu's not. But Bearded just seems to be proactively going out of his way, trying to find ways to engage with people who are, you know, detractors or whatever. Um, and I, and I think that speaks to the, to the game is good. There's not, there's reasons for, I think bearded to be sticking up for him and trying to go to bat for them. Um, but again, it does seem like a lot of times he's the one really doing a, a better job a lot of times than even SMS is doing to promote their game and to try and create a positive environment. Um, so yeah, anyway. All right. Well, let, I, th- I think we've talked about fault enough. And <laughs> I we got a shit on it tonight. <laughs> Let's move on to Overprime, which didn't have too many updates, but they did. Um, they had a sh- they had two shorts, two YouTube shorts. One of them were pro- um promoting their Discord, telling people that's way that's the the place where they can find information, which is absolutely true. And I think they've done a great job. Anytime there's a social post, this is something the other companies don't do. The other companies will do social posts, and if you don't have Twitter, you won't ever see it. Or they'll do a post on like TikTok or something. If you don't have TikTok, you'll never see that post. Yeah, everything they do gets linked in their discord so yep. you can go to their discord and have one single source for all things uh over prime which i think is really cool the other short they did was much like they did with murdoch last week they did this with kalari now if you look up go ahead and look up original paragon teasers these are exactly the way that epic promoted paragon and i think this kind of encapsul- encapsulates a lot of what we know about Overprime, Overprime, I think, is a modernized love letter to Paragon. It is mm-hmm. not Paragon. And I think that's um, a pretty good um, summary of them. And I'm um, really sorry for summary, talking so much without hitting you guys up, but I have to pee. So I'm going to be right back. Fine. Go. Yeah, get it out. Do that. I, I, dude, actually, that's like a really profound thing that, that Mangus just said there. That's actually, I hadn't really put it together that way. I don't know about you, but like that kind of, yeah, like a little bit of a, a homage love letter to the guys who really paved the way because we all know with paragon right the really especially you guys who are like really big paragon like those devs were working hard on that game Mm -hmm. and granted towards the end there was a lot of things that we obviously don't have like you know privy access to that kind of threw the game in a weird space but when paragon first came out man that you could tell that that game was being built by people who wanted to make a cool fucking game and i think that's why the community is still so engaged with these paragon successors is because of what they created initially so i do that's, that was such a cool thing for for mangus to point out i do think that Overprime has out of the para zombies really kind of not shied away from the things that they loved about paragon also and are doing kind of cool homages i didn't even think about that. that's a really cool thing what did you think about it that's yeah i mean i completely agree that that's that's exactly what Overprime feels like is mm-hmm. it's not it's paying credit where credit's due without making that their identity at the same time right where i feel like some of the like predecessor makes it their identity that like oh yeah we're we're paragon yeah. like we that's where we came from paragon too right and fault is is kind of doing it in their own way as well mm-hmm. over prime is really trying to like hit it out of the park but in their own direction while still paying the the right respect to where they came from at the same time uh, and, and i think people will argue against that saying that because they changed the names they're not doing that <laughs> but They've created so much else. At this point, they could have created an entirely new game. Probably. They did not need to do what they have been. Yeah, I agree with that. I think they could have just created their own assets. I think them using the assets probably is more because they loved those assets themselves mm-hmm. just as much as we all do. And um, they wanted to give them new names because they did want to differentiate themselves and 
when you Google the names of the, the champions, you're not going to get Paragon or you're not going to get Fault or um, Predecessor. You're going to get Overprime, which I think is good. You know, so they're doing the right things to to separate in a, in a way while also paying homage. And um, yeah, I, and again, for me, just more cool stuff coming out. They're consistently, basically since uh, the playtest, I feel like it's every two weeks or week and a half, we get something, whether big or small, we get something from the dev team, even if it's a... a fish play item i don't know <laughs> mangoes you stole my joke and i'm so mad about it <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say console win i second i saw covetous lemon in chat oh, man. uh no but it's i can bring up a good point the changing of the names for overprime is such a good idea from a search engine perspective yeah because they're all unique right they're not you're not going to type in murdoch or you're not going to type in scud guide and get predecessor or fault Right. right, you're going to type in Scud Guide and get Scud Guides for Overprime because that's the only game that has that name for that character. Brilliant idea from a marketing perspective. I know the marketing something or others uh, don't mean a lot to people, but but it's a brilliant idea and I I think it's great. <laughs> it's just me that I don't, I don't like marketing people. Like anybody that's involved in marketing whatsoever, just don't like them. That makes sense. Your relationship yeah. now makes a I, lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 it's weird because like he also likes kathleen who had a really huge background <laughs> in marketing and <laughs> and i've worked in sales which could be part of marketing no though. sales is not marketing <laughs> you know, oh, well, no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> no marketing wishes they were sales i actually like any of you but well, that's fair sounds about right yeah. Yeah, that's fair anyway <laughs> So, I mean, so uh, uh, here's the other thing with a, a I couldn't find it today. I looked all through their YouTube channel. I couldn't find it. They did like a what should we call it? Like a pre like um. They did their cinematic trailer trailer. They did their gameplay trailer or whatever, mm -hmm. and it was like again a modernized love letter to Paragon. Like it was very similar, very much in the vein of Paragon's old. Um, gameplay trailer, but with like their own overprime twist. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't I know love... what the guys talked about while I was taking a a wee. Oh, we talked about how, te how terrible you were. Um, oh, I figured it's your community, so of course we did. But they all know that already, so yeah, they, they pay attention. Um, but the, the, the I'm wondering when these games will run out of epic assets. How well off the company will be? I mean, so we know overprime already is releasing every three months. They're coming out with a unique hero. And then every month they're doing a pair or an epic asset, which I think is the great way for them to slowly lean into providing their own content for the game. Even if they already have two characters that we know of theoretically ready for the game to be played in some capacity. Um, it's a great way for them to lean off of the epic assets while still building themselves up. I really, I, I would say in my levels of concern for like uh, not using epic assets, I'm least worried about Overprime. I'm in the middle about Predecessor, and I'm horrified for what Fault's going to do when uh, they run out of Epic Assets to use. I mean, they can't even release the current Epic Assets. So <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> uh, I, I agree. I think Overprime does has shown at least their ability to put together really interesting kits through even using Epic Assets. Um, and if they take that same kind of approach when they can just do whatever they want because they aren't confined to the ideas that people are going to come in with preconceived notions of what good should do uh i think that that, that they're going to be probably putting out really good stuff and um i think with predecessor getting the money that they're getting they should have no excuses to be able to really hire some you know good idea people who could put stuff you know on paper and make it work um so i, I think it's possible but i agree with windu's take that it'll be interesting once one once all three of these games are out how everything works and then when they stop using just the epic assets that we all are familiar with, what does the game look like then? Is it still really cool and interesting? I don't know, but I, I, it's it's a very cool topic. To, to, to think Last Toys King, when did you sneak in here? Actually, I, I do want to reorganize wait, wait, my wait, list real quick. Wait, Sorry, man, you just okay, want me to cut you okay, off wait, to reorganize wait, my list. Wait, yeah. Wait, wait, okay. Wait, yeah. Least okay. worried. I'm least worried about Ethereal oh, because oh, we don't use Epic Assets. Oh, 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 so oh, thank you very oh, much. Oh, oh, oh. Let me just uh, put that out oh, there. Enough, thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, we've seen teased, to, um, well, three different new heroes from Soul Eve. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've seen Adele, Rena, 
and then that fucking ninja girl with the sword. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then we've seen one for predecessor. We haven't seen anything from uh, from Strange Matter. Yeah. So. <laughs> Good. <laughs> However, the girl with the sword looked very similar to Kalari. I agree. Like it, it, other than the ultimate that she used, or what I assume was an ultimate, she looked like she could have just been a Kalari skin. <laughs> I have a I mean, question. <laughs> Do we really think that console matters? Kayla, Kayla, for the record. Does console matter? Does console really matter to the the yeah. bigger player base that, that that is in the third MOBA? That, that's something I completely forgot to mention when we were talking about Predecessor when we were talking about X Sundown. He's very focused on keeping Predecessor in a in a state where it will be viable for console. Correct. And I think that's absolutely amazing and great because we know, like Jedi's joking around, we all know that console is a huge, huge part of if these games are going to be successful or not. And again, the only company that we've seen solid evidence for console production for is Soul Eve with Overprime. Yep. They actually showed a member of their community playing the game on the PS5. Yep. The other and, thing, uh, so yeah. as solid as this could be taken, I was looking at Predecessor's website the other day, and it does state that they are a free-to-play, yep. which is an important thing, because we haven't been sure if they're going to charge for early access. Them stating on their website free to play already implies they're not, but we'll have to wait and see if that changes. And then it also says game for PC and console. So that's that's the only like other than their statements of like, yeah, we'll eventually develop for console. This being front and center on their website implies that it's somewhere further down production than just an idea. Yep. Yeah. I, I definitely don't want to see them go the route of core, which. <laughs> I think at this point, nobody even remembers Core, <laughs> but Core was one of the original Paragon remakes that they ended up going tits up, but uh, actually, I think they might be still around, but they're using their own assets. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> one of the things they did in their, in their like proof of concept videos, the very first proof of concept video, they put this um, end user agreement screen with PlayStation, which I was able to get to when I owned a... Um, a landscaping business. All you had to do was have like a tax code for a business yep. and you and can get to the screen and they posted it and people lost their goddamn minds thinking it was definitely coming to PlayStation. Didn't SMS do the same thing? Kind of, but not really. I they didn't post they that had, screen. I swear they post. Oh, uh, you're right. They didn't post the direct. Yeah, I, I do remember that for Corey. It was like the hardcore direct like notification that they got via email. Um, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see for sure what comes about with all of these games and console and all of those things, because it will be definitely interesting to see how the game shifts from that, right? Because we, what was it? Overprime said that they're not going to have crossplay enabled, which I think on, on, on initial, uh, launch, right. Or in, in early access, right. They said that that's not currently what they have. Wasn't that what he said? I thought they said at all, but I can't. I well, if I that's true, remember. that would be bad. Because we talked about that. They had that big interview that we talked about that they were not doing crossplay and that we think mm-hmm. they should change that. I don't think I've heard them say that they're changing they that officially. Reneged on that statement. Yeah. yeah. So the, okay, maybe I'm misremembering. Well, I, then yeah, that is bad because you having two split player bases is not, in my opinion. Not bad. It's not good. You need to have them to be able to play with each other. That's it, part of the what made Paragon great was you had heroes like Morgesh, as much as I shit on her, that console players could use. You had Revenant that console players could carry with. And it, in fact, Paragon was even better for melee. Uh, uh, with, with, on console was better for melee heroes because you had more control over movement. Yep. yep. Um, that third person aspect of Paragon is what made it really good on console mm-hmm. and being able to play with as a PC user, being able to that most of my friends were on PlayStation. Same. Like that's how I made most of my friends in Paragon. And I would love to see that come back. There it is. FAQ. See boys. Billy said they're testing it internal and willing to only worried about fairness. It's in their discord in the FAQ. All right. Boom. Um, and I did find the post from June 3rd, 2020 
of SMS announcing that they've taken the first step toward console on their okay. website. So it's been two years. Are we still on the first step? Uh, we, where, we don't know. We they, hired a, they, <laughs> they did say they hired an uh, outside team to do it, right? That's I mean, they got to be real careful about saying anything about console, though, because once you say console, people, like I said, lose their goddamn mm-hmm. minds. Um, I've said it before. I'm saying again right now. 70% of Paragon's player base were console users. So yep. that's the audience that if, if they're going to recapture the Paragon audience, they need to recapture that console audience because I, I know a few people who bought pcs specifically to play these paragon remakes but not everybody can just fucking buy a pc mm-hmm. for these paragon remakes i mean and i will you... say too uh almost a hundred percent they're all going to come out on ps5 i know a lot of people want them to come out on ps4 it's not going to happen man so they originally when a lot of these games were first being announced just in general there was the rules of for if you're developing for PS4, you have to develop for PS5. In the last three months, I think it is, Sony has since dropped that stipulation. You are no longer required to develop just or for both. You now oh, really? can just develop for PS5. Okay, so okay. it is entirely possible that they're not developing for both anymore. That they dropped PS4 and are just going to PS5. Which is Don, what's up? Uh in in Yukios? In Yukios? Normal should be cross-play compatible, but ranked should be 100 should 100 percent be split. I kind of agree with that. I, I it's I'd be fine. Those, with that. I would love to be able to play ranked with my friends. So from that perspective, that feels like it sucks. But from a competitive integrity integrity, there's absolutely an aspect that having console players on in a mixed ranked game could be detrimental. It, it will. I mean, the only way that really works though is if they have enough players to be able to split it. Like that's tough uh what why does it look like viking jedi is punished by jelly knees and is quietly shaking his head oh well <laughs> you haven't been to our streams lately because we get punished in this stream all the time it just gets edited what? out it just gets edited out yeah what jedi is being punished because he couldn't go down far enough true <laughs> um my beard got in the way <laughs> um uh, <laughs> I, I just thought of something else to say and i just refrained when are we going to mobile, though? No. Nope. Thank you, though. I, I can mean, see Over Prime doing it. I can see so many. Oh, oh, of, of the Over Prime, three, Over Prime probably would and could. <laughs> I mean, everybody's got loot boxes. What the fuck? Why not go to mobile and just use the full mobile economy? <laughs> you saw it too, man. <laughs> A couple's counseling voice call. <laughs> it is. It's perfect for Cosmo and Wanda, too. So, you know. <laughs> All right. We got to wrap this up, boys. I'm getting texts from the wife. She wants to go and do stuff. So let's wrap it up. <laughs> oh, what kind of stuff? Um, oh, no. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, well, I mean, Viking, if you want to go, you can go ahead and go. Uh, let's. <laughs> you gotta take him Why am I trapped? <laughs> what the hell? Jelly, you got to stay here. Um, okay. So, so that, that kind of closes out the um, official for the minions, but. Uh, let, let's talk with chat a little bit and yeah, please. Any, any questions that they have Absolutely. Let's interact with the chat since we're live. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot, uh, X Beto. I've, I've seen a lot of people I've never seen before, which is awesome. Uh, not low X. I'm sorry if I'd never seen you before, but I've never seen you before. So welcome. <laughs> welcome in. Um, it's okay. If Mangu says he hasn't seen you before, I've seen you in my heart. You've always been there. <laughs> Don't let Mangus talk you talk to you like this. Right, Mangus is the older version older of Timmy please. Turner. <laughs> throw, throw in your questions and we'll uh, we'll start hey, trying to get through them. What about console players can choose to start a ranked with PC players? Smite has this if I'm not wrong. I, I'd be okay with an option. I think yeah. a lot of the times options cover a lot of a world of hurt, right? Like being able to toggle a button that says, I mean, like League of Legends, for instance, when you're a brand new player in League of Legends, you have all chat disabled. You have to go in there and toggle a button to say that you want to hear, you want to be able to get voice, or not voice messages, just messages in general from the other team. Right. I think that's perfectly fine. Right? I think a lot of these games can just have toggleable options that cover up a world of hurt. I agree. And, uh, it, it can go both ways, too. Like, um, we saw with uh, uh, Vampire of the Masquerade Blood Hunt that console auto-aim was so overtuned that people were just fucking slaying PC players on console because they didn't actually have, they just had to get the cursor somewhere in the vicinity of somebody mm-hmm. to Call lock of on headshots. 
That, dude, did the same thing happen with Call of Duty? I oh, like dude. Duty yeah, it became like there was a... I think they fixed it a lot now, but that basically every major Call of Duty streamer had was switching to playing on, on controller and console because the aim assist was just ungodly good. Like, it was just too easy to yeah. just laser people, especially with certain setups that you could get in, in the builds. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do think that the games are getting... It would... Of the, t the, the the player base that I'd be worried about, it it would be for the console players, right? Especially when you start getting into um, free-to-play games where, you know, hacking can become a thing. And we did see this in Overprime. There absolutely were hacks in the game and people were, you know, using exploits and all that stuff. So it, it, it's rarer, not impossible, but rarer on consoles because how for whatever reason, the way that their, their setup is. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I think... For me, the the concern has always been when I think about like console, and I did see this in Paragon, was the mouse and keyboard users porting to the game through uh, either Xbox or PlayStation. So uh, they were, you know, that way they get the better aim with the aim assist and all that nonsense. Um, now I didn't do it for that reason, but when Apex first came out, I bought a thing to convert my mouse and keyboard inputs on PS4. So I could play Apex with my friends on PS4. Mm -hmm. And that absolutely gave me an insane advantage. Yeah. Oh, I went really? from a couple kills a game on PC to 15 kill games instantaneously because I had my comfortability of mouse and keyboard and the aim assist of controller. And it was insane. Yeah. So that would be the only other maybe, maybe concerns with some of the cross play type stuff or even in general. But, uh, I, it, to me, it depends on the player base, right? Well, if they don't have a big enough player base, they have to have everybody connected, right? That would be like, full, you know, separating Epic and in Steam right now. That would be just stupid. You would, it would, there'd be no benefit whatsoever doing that. Uh, it would just be, yeah, it would be garbage. But Stun asked an inter interesting question. Do you think Fault should bring down the learning curve a bit to Pred or Overprime's level? And I don't think they should. But I think they need no. to onboard players better so they understand that learning curve to the same level that Pred and Overprime have. Mm. Okay, so follow-up question. Does Fault have the ability to be able to onboard players effective enough to be able to do that versus just going the other route and making it easier? Right now, no. And again, um, Strange Matter Studios isn't in a place where they have a lot of money. They're completely community funded, which has its pros. But one of the cons is that they have to pick and choose what they put their meager amount of money into. Yeah. And um, I think player onboarding is probably something that they should put a little more attention to, but they, they can't put as much into it. Like, like they can't just shit skins out like Overprime does. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's, we talked about it in the past, Mangoose, of, while having more money can bring other issues of like out external influence, it allows you to diversify what you're working on significantly more. Out of a hundred mm -hmm. things, Overprime can work on five at a time. Predecessor can work on three at a time, but Fault is always down to one thing at a time. And it makes a difference. And it makes a difference in terms of progression of development as well. Uh, oh, Robert, do you guys see a really good question. Yeah, do you guys see a future where all three of these games can thrive at the same time? Absolutely not. Yeah, not a chance. Maybe at either. most, two. Um, but I don't see all three of them. I don't see, mainly, I don't see Fault and Predecessor existing in the same space at the same time. Correct. Right. Those two are the biggest. It's going to be Overprime and Fault or Overprime and Predecessor. And yep. if you go by right now, if you go by the community response to both games right now, I think it will be Overprime and Predecessor. Yep. That can change. I like I've been tracking these games since fucking 2018. And I've seen a <laughs> lot of shit come and go. I think like, a prime example understand. is core, right? Core was the favored to win and predecessor was the underdog. And now it's completely different. Predecessor was a huge underdog. Mm -hmm. Predecessor was smaller, a smaller underdog than, than, than fault mm -hmm. compared to, compared to core. Absolutely. And now core completely gone and predecessors on top. You want to field that one? Uh, does Ethereal have plans to improve the response to non, I assume that's supposed to be USA players. Like I played with Pred with 140 ping, but it felt like 30 ping. Absolutely. We actually plan to have servers in a bunch of different places just for our tests because they were trying to find either errors that we had before and had fixed or whatever it was. It's, it, we were trying to keep it more localized 
so we have less variables to worry about in terms of what potential errors could prop up. But absolutely, we're planning to expand to make the ping more friendly to people all over the place. Uh, Xpido, if you guys had to rank the pair of zombies according to which you think will succeed years down the line, who's first and who's last? People always ask that and think that I won't answer, but I will. I don't. I don't give a shit. I'll give an answer. I don't <laughs> give a shit either. I think, I think predecessor over prime fault. And then, think... if you want me to throw ethereal in there, I think. Sorry, Jelly. Predecessor ethereal over prime fault. Wow. I'm not. I'm, I, I'm happy to be I, second. I, honestly, I, I'm, I'm surprised he ranked it that high. So um, I, I, go ahead, go ahead. You could do yours if you I want. I think if I'm doing the, so, I, I'm biased on ethereal, so I'm not going to include the ethereal in this. But uh, I think for the three para zombies, honestly, it would depend on what day you asked me that I would say predecessor or overprime for first. I think they're so close that like if I just came off of a predecessor playtest, I'd be like, oh yeah, predecessor. But if I just came off an overprime playtest, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, overprime, no problem. So those are interchangeable, honestly, but I would definitively put fault in third for that. Yeah, I'm kind of, I mean, I didn't get to play predecessor, so I have a harder time ranking predecessor currently, but just based off of what, you know, I've learned over the last uh, few weeks to months, uh, it seems like a really fun game. Um, and they look like they're really doing all the right things. So for me, it'd probably be overprime, predecessor, ethereal fault. The only reason why even Ethereal, because it's so hard to rank it with those three. I think Ethereal is its own game, guys. It's if you would have <laughs> if you would have asked me Ethereal, like I don't know what when did we when did you bring me in, in, in as part okay, of our, like a year, year and, and a half, half ago, two years yeah. ago? I probably would be like, dude, I'm not even sure Ethereal will make it to the light of day beyond <laughs> just this like 50 people who even know it exists right now. Now with where it's currently at, like man, it's I mean it still has a lot a long way to go, but I think it's. It's so far removed. It's still it's a third person MOBA, but it's not in the same. Con I know we bring it into FPM, um, and oh, but it's not really in the same. Um, for anybody who doesn't know about Ethereal all that much, like it's not in the same realm as these other pair of zombies. It's more uh, akin to like a, I guess to a Smite maybe if you really want to kind of compare it to something. But even then, I wouldn't say it's Smite. It's, it's fucking. Just, it's just its own thing. Just like how Smite isn't a pair of zombie. It, ethereal is not a pair of zombie. That's what I mean when comparing it to Smite. It's not the same it's, gameplay. As well. It's the 3D chess of MOBAs. It's weird. It's different. It's Literally. good. It's weird. It's different. It's and but, I think um, someone brought up an interesting thing of uh, I think it may have been Dez. No, sorry, it was Robert Jones. I think Fault is a better game, but Predecessor just feels so much better. And I think that's an important hallmark mm, of these yeah. games is the, yeah. the feel of the game, because and, and if I attributed that to rankings i think it still falls in that same rankings that i did before of fault and over or fault and predecessor sorry over prime and predecessor are interchangeable for me that like they feel really really good and they're way up there in terms of feel but then the feel of fault is down he's by far the worst of the three and that feeling is a big deal for these games right like that's it's not something that can be overlooked and i and We've even talked about it with Bearded uh, in the past that the feeling of the of fault is not where fault shines, but the feeling of fault is where people care a lot about, and that's with, like where a lot of uh, differing opinions come in. I think I, I want to say real quick too that I don't fault I don't rank fault last because I think it's bad. I True. think fault's no. great. I think it's a really really good game. I do. Too. I just think that they're past has caught up with them. Like they made so many mistakes in the past that they are not going to be able to overcome it. See, I um, think they're just too slow. That's what I think is why they're not going to overcome it. I think well, they're reacting... I mean, that's part, that's part of it. Yeah. That's part of it. I but... Just, that, but they're not taking advantage of the advantage they have. Right. And I, and it's, we're at the point where you're almost too late. Like if you can't start now, you're running out of time very, very rapidly to take that advantage. And they cultivated this community very early of get good or get out. And yep. that has carried on with them to, to now. And that, that has really hurt them. Oh, jury can kick one. Oh, one. He had a good, I thought it was a good question, but he retracted it. So now I don't, and I don't remember exactly what it was. So <laughs> uh, maybe he wants to reword it, but uh, Xpito again, uh, you guys talked a while ago about new players struggling to play these kind of MOBAs. What do you think the devs could do to smooth the learning curve? Let's do this one uh, pretty rapid fire because we have talked about this quite a bit before. 
You want to go first? I think having having a really solid tutorial or onboarding system is the biggest thing. And I think uh, League of Legends does a great job. If you guys have not played, if you've been playing League of Legends for a long time and have not played through the new tutorial that they have, mm -hmm. it is a hundred times better than the old one was. And the old one wasn't even that bad, honestly. Like, but they're the way they onboard their players. They explain each mechanic quickly and succinctly, but enough that you get the concept. And then, okay, I've grasped this concept. Now add an additional thing in. Now add one additional thing in. And I think these games need to do that. Uh, Overprime has done that to an extent with their tutorial, and they're improving that even further, which I can't wait to see what the new one is like. But I think that's the biggest thing is introduce these concepts individually and then bring them all together, have the character, the person, the player play a game with all of those concepts together. Be like, okay, I remember. Stay behind your minions. Oh, 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 oh. oh you guys froze. We did. <laughs> um, I remember stay behind your minions. I remember stay out of tower range. I remember use my abilities. I remember whatever, right? I think that's a great way to do this. And basically all but Overprime haven't done anything toward that end yet. Oh, man, Covetous Lemon mentioned Phoenix Rising. That, <laughs> that lets me know that Covetous Lemon is a real G. <laughs> An old school. Uh, I, I think uh, Jelly answered that one pretty good. I don't really have a whole lot to add on to it. And again, we have covered this in past videos. Um, but yeah, just it, almost anything better than what most of these games currently have is a, is a step in the right direction. It's, it's a very hard genre to learn, and they need to do everything they can to get anyone who downloads the game to try and keep it in, keep them in the game for as long as possible. Um, so that that's, should be a major focus for all of them. Uh, Jerry Can Kick, I think, is his name. I don't know. Uh, do you find playing those games easier with keyboard and mouse or joystick? Uh, so what are your guys' initial takes on that? Keyboard, mouse, joystick? I only play, like, Bloodstained and, like, 2D side-scrollers with my controller. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm a hardcore keyboard and mouse guy. So I, I have nothing against console. I just don't have a console. I just don't have one. Yeah, I, maybe I'm the, the 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 break in the mold here. I play Paragon on PlayStation exclusively. I never played it on PC. Um, since playing like Fault and some of those, I do find myself sometimes missing the ease of mobility using the joystick. It does it, like being able to side strafe a little bit cleaner, you know, doing circles and stuff like that. But hitting skill shots and some of the more complex abilities that now these kits have. I think lend themselves a little bit better to keyboard and mouse. Um, not impossible to accomplish on a, on a controller, but it just seems like if you want to take the game serious, you're probably going to have a better experience doing so on um, mouse and keyboard. I did go from console smite to mouse and keyboard smite. Oui. Oh my God, that was hard. Dude, I fucked that up. The, I, <laughs> I did the same thing with uh, Overwatch. Going from Overwatch console first, to trying to play it on PC and uh, so the learning curve for those transitions is super hard. I it's think a, it's tough. At least my my thoughts on this. I think the VR. skill floor is lower on mouse and keyboard, but the skill ceiling is very very similar for both of them. Sure, that yeah. it's it's a lot more at least for me intuitive mouse and keyboard wise, especially in 3D mobas where you actually have that verticality to take into account. But the skill ceiling can be the same. Because I've seen console players just drop circles around mouse and keyboard players. So it's not just a definitive advantage. Me. <laughs> okay. Uh, man. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch Ike. Mitch Ike. Has, uh, just talking about some shit that I really want to get into and open up uh, like a whole nother <laughs> fucking rabbit hole to jump down. But this is starting to be like the longest fucking episode before the main news we've ever done. <laughs> so I think we need to about wrap it up. So I think we're going to do that now. Um, as always, guys, if you want to watch, uh, if you want to tune into the Jelly Knees, I'll have his YouTube and Twitch linked in the uh, video description below. If you watch this on the video, and uh, if you want to check out the Viking Jedi's Twitter, which I did adjust it on my cheat sheet, oh yeah, Viking Jedi. Um, yeah, follow you, me on Twitter. You can check that out also linked in the video description below. If you're watching this as a video, Jelly has a Twitter. Once this goes down, I'm going to unlist it so that I can take this footage and make like the actual. For the minions video so if you guys want to go back and watch that you can but uh yeah i think that's going to be about wrap it up this week uh jelly knees and uh the viking jedi do you guys have anything final you want to say i think this was a good episode it's good to see everybody in chat live 
Um, make sure you guys go leave a comment and like the video tomorrow when it comes out, even though you were here to watch it live, because <laughs> engagement's important. It is. Even though I'm a marking, marketing something or other, um, <laughs> engagement's important. Glad to see you guys. Maybe we'll do this again if Mangoose can get his computer figured out. Nine yeah, we'll, of the time. we'll try and get it, get it going. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Uh, I'm same. I, I One, I just love being able to see like the questions coming through and the reactions to what we were talking about. It just makes it for a more like engaging uh, conversation. Um, but uh, yeah, so again, if you guys really liked this type, make sure you let us know and, and keep engaging with it. I know it sounds lame, but it's how we know that it works. <laughs> That's really it. Yeah. <laughs> but it was fun, and I got to be here live with my buddy. Who are you? Aww. Aww. We we you had guys, guys you know, we had like this whole thing before we decided to do it live, like where I was gonna try and like come in and be like, "What are you guys talking about?" or something. <laughs> I don't know, uh, and try and make it a whole production. But instead, because it's live and we had all the, th we we're just like, "Yeah, <laughs> is that what we were I like?" Yeah, that's our, okay. go get yourself a plate of spaghetti. Well, so, and then <laughs> at least for me, <laughs> before he, I'm just. Before he turned on the video, I wasn't sure where I was going to be. And it's so I was like inching into it his... because <laughs> he's got his camera right up here. And so I was like, I don't know where the how far out the view is, because I'm normally looking from it like a viewer looks at it, you know? So I was like, I need to be like right here. He's been stealing. Well, he's been stealing my armrest. He's like, oh, you can have this armrest. And he's been pushing no, no, me you off said I'm going to take this armrest. Yeah, no, no, yeah, but you agreed that I could have and it. And I warned you that this right. is going to be an airplane <laughs> fight the whole time. <laughs> So we love you guys. Who's Thank taller? You for Who's taller, biking or, je or, or jelly knees? I think Jelly's technically taller. Yeah. He's like like by uh like maybe half an inch or so. I don't know. Right around. I there. think I've been shrinking to be honest. I don't know. You're I'm both older. taller than me. Yeah, we're both big. Well, yeah, Mangus, Mangus is a short guy, so. But I'm scrappy. I'm scrappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not fucking short. I'm just average. You guys are just fucking. No, you're big. short. You're short. <laughs> guys, I notice you. Fucking 511. All right. Uh, that is going to wrap it up for this week, guys. Appreciate you coming out. If you're watching this live, I appreciate you watching the video. If you're watching the video, but for now, this is the For the Minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. Man Goose. Special shout out to channel members I Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Raven, and Blastoise King.